What's up guys, Kayak Mike here. We are going to go over the check-in process for the King Cat National Kayak Trail. The process is going to be the same every single place we go. It was extremely smooth last year. Um, hopefully we're going to make it extremely smooth again this year. First thing I want to say though, make sure you are a member of the online catfishing tournaments group on the Fishing Chaos app before you enter any events. If you somehow slip by and enter an event and I don't notice before the event starts, you are forfeiting all your points. For example, the King Cat National Trail has a $5,000 point raise. All of our month longs have a $1,000 or $500 point raise. Um, the Scioto Trail has a $500 point raise. Hoover has a $500 point raise. So there's a lot of money be, being given out in these point races. If you're not a member, you are not going to be eligible for that event to get points. You also, If you somehow slip by, you also will not be paid out until you become a member. Um, it's only 20 bucks size. The membership goes to pay towards insurance and everything else gets put right back into the scene. So I, I don't think it's that big of an ask. So let's go on to our actual checking in process. What I'm going to do now is we're going to make my ugly mug this whole thing. We're going to pop up our sponsors. All right. We got all our sponsors. The night before every single event is typically when we have our first check in for a tournament. So Saturday tournaments will have a Friday night check-in sunday tournaments will have a saturday night check-in the check-in is typically six o'clock to eight not always typically six o'clock to eight um i'm pretty sure down in alabama we're going to be uh six o'clock to eight and it's going to be at logan's roadhouse logan's roadhouse is for sure uh but i just i can't remember the time off the top of my head that's all on the event page so this video is just the check-in process so when you go to check-in you must have your musky bumper you do not need to have your kayak uh, we did a kayak check last year, first event, and I was like, this is completely irrelevant and stupid, so we're not we're not forcing kayak checks anymore. So make sure you have your musky bumper at check-in. You will not receive your packet if you do not have your musky bumper. What I do is I measure your musky bumper, make sure it's within an eighth inch leniency. We haven't had a single musky bumper uh, fail measurements yet. Also, guys, remember, musky bumper, only legal board currently in the entire scene, uh, especially for the King Cat National Trail. I will make sure that your bump has a right angle. If it doesn't, you're going to have to, you know, get a new musky bumper or something. But again, we still, we haven't had a single person fail that check. And then once I make sure everything's good, length's good, and the bump is a right angle, I will be throwing these on your board. One of these stickers has to be in every picture that you submit in these tournaments. I'll put four or five on your board in various places. What I also do is I take a permanent marker and I mark your board in certain areas just in case Mother Nature knocks these off. I don't want you to be completely um, screwed because it rained and all of your stickers fell off. So I, I'm not going to let people lose because of Mother Nature. So that's our fail safe. I will mark it with permanent marker as well. Uh, after you get your board checked, your board will be certified. Your stickers will be put on. You will receive a packet. You will have a poker chip. I'll explain the importance of this in a second. And you will receive an identifier. Our identifiers this year. You will receive the same identifier. Not everyone will receive the same identifier. But you will receive multiple of the same identifier. So if this is your identifier, you'll receive two to five of these. Just depending on how many I feel like giving out. Uh, now that I'm making these, I can make a lot more for a lot less. So I'm just laminating our sponsor's logos. You might get two to five of these legal electric our other two sponsors raccoon creek you know you got raccoon creek and you got king cat you might get some of these not everyone's going to have the same identifier i'm going to write down which sponsor you have you know uh, i'm also a sponsor of the trail so you might get one of these uh my ugly mug might be your identifier that seems a little narcissistic but i'm putting a lot of money into this i'm doing some self-promoting this year so you might say, you just showed everyone the identifiers. People could print them out themselves and get, you know, ahead of time and go fish and try and save the pictures and change the ease of data. That's not going to happen because if you noticed on this, I have things written. When I hand you your identifiers, I'm going to make a unique marking on every single identifier and I'm going to notate what marking I put on your identifier. I might put a couple letters. I might put a couple numbers. I might put a, a shape. Uh, no one's going to know. So if you want to try and game the system and, you know, get your own identifiers printed out ahead of time, you'll never know what I'm going to do in person right there to write on your personal identifier. So there's no way to game the system that way. The chip. 
This is if you want to leave the tournament early the day of the tournament. Let's say it's really bad weather the day of the tournament and you're just a fair weather fisherman like me. Or you only caught one or two fish throughout the day. It's a three fish limit and it's noon, it's hot, and you're just miserable and you want to go home. Well, your fish can still count and your placement can still count for points. But you have to go to the checkout location and return this chip. So when I go to the checkout location at the end of the tournament, I will grab the bin. I will look in the bin. Anyone who has a chip in the bin, I will mark off that you made it back in time to the checkout. Our checkout ends an hour after Lines Out. So for instance, if Lines Out is 3 p.m., you have until 4 p.m. to get back to the checkout, wherever that checkout location is. It'll be on the event page. And you also have an hour to get all your fish submitted. Uh, I know places like Nickajack down in Bama, not everywhere has great reception. So you have an hour after you're done fishing, after lines out, to get your fish submitted on top of getting back to the checkout location. If you are not in person in the checkout location, wherever we put the boundaries, you are disqualified if you're not there by an hour afterwards. For instance, I believe our Pickwick Wilson ends at 3 p.m. If you are not at the checkout location by 4 p.m., you are completely disqualified. If you not if you have not returned your chip by 4 p.m., you are completely disqualified. Um, checking in, if let's say you cannot make the night before check-in, you can check in the morning of. I will be at the check-in location an hour before lines in. So again, we'll use Pickwick for example. Um, I believe lines is at 7 a.m. I will be at the checkout locate or the check-in location at 6 a.m. morning of. If you cannot make the night before, because I don't want guys to like, let's say guys are working Friday night. I don't want them not to be able to fish a Saturday event because they're traveling Friday to get there. Um, so I will be at the check in location an hour before lines in. You will check in with me. We will do the same thing. Everything's the same. I measure your board, right angle it, give you your stickers. I'll give you your identifier. We will notate, etc. cetera. Um, and then you go fish. Uh, the boundaries and, and everything will be on the event page. So. This video is dedicated just to the check-in and check-out process. You have two hours after lines out to challenge fish. So the theory behind that is you have an hour to get all your fish submitted after lines out, and then you have an additional hour to challenge fish because if people are submitting fish up until, you know, let's say 4 p.m. on a 3 p.m. lines out, you can't have your challenges end at 4. The challenges have to be open for another hour. Um... The only time I will adjust any kind of scores after that two-hour time frame to challenge is if it's a black and white mistake that I made. That's the check-in, check-out process. Really simple. I'm going to do it in summary again really quick. Night before the tournament, typically about 6 o'clock, we will meet somewhere for an hour or two. Bring your musky bumper. I measure it. I check the bump. I mark your board up. I write on it. You get identifiers. I put unique things on your identifier. You get a chip if you want to leave the day of the tournament early. Return the chip. If you cannot make the night before check-in, morning of, hour before lines in, we will be at the check-in location. And then if you want to leave early, return this to the checkout location before you leave. Um, and then you have an hour after lines out to get to the checkout location. And then you have an additional hour after that to challenge fish. All right, that's the checking in and checking out process. Extremely simple. Any questions, hit me up.